Today we will have parallel lines cut by a transversal. Parallel lines are two lines that run side by side and never cross like this. Anytime they're cut like that, that is the transversal. The teak is 8.8D. Use informational arguments to establish facts about the angle sums and exterior angles of triangles, which is what we did yesterday. The angles created when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Okay, we have obtuse angles, which are obtuse angles open wide. Okay, the word obtuse just simply means big. Examples of obtuse angles are angle two, angle four. See how that opens wide? Angle six opens wide, and angle eight. They open wider than 90 degrees. That's what obtuse is. And we also have acute angles. They open less than 90. Okay, on a straight line, the uh, acute angle is always next to the obtuse angle. And it's smaller. It's smaller than that obtuse angle. Angle 1, 3, 5, and 7. Now, the sum of those two angles side by side, okay, this acute angle right here and this obtuse angle equals to 180 because they're side by side on a straight line. Okay, that's important because we're going to find missing angles using the fact that those two side by side equal to 180. Okay, let me scoot my calculator over. Okay, so it says if the measurement of angle one is 57 degrees, find the measurement of all of the other angles. So, the first thing I want you to know is that if this is 57, okay, all of the acute, all of the small angles are equal to 57. And here's how you locate those, okay? Angle 3, the one directly across from it, is also 57. Okay? And then down here at the bottom, in the direct same places as at the top, here and here, you see how those are in the same places on that line? That is 57, and this one is 57, okay? And we can find angle two, the obtuse one, by doing 180 minus 57. So I go to my calculator, I'm gonna do 180 minus 57, and it gives us 123. So angle two is 123. So you know angle four is 123, angle six is 123, and angle eight is 123. And you know that this is true because look, these two are side by side, 57 and 23, and they equal to 180. Okay, the same for these two that are side by side, 123 and 57, they equal to 180. Same for these two. And same for those two. They all equal to the 180 that they have to because they are right next to each other. They are side by side. Okay. Here's another example. Okay. So it says if the measurement of angle A it's 120 degrees. What is the measurement of angle H? So here's A. We're going to write in the 120. And they want us to find H down here. Okay. Now, me, I can look at this and see that this is obtuse. It opens wide. It's not the small angle. This one here is definitely smaller than this one. This is also an obtuse. So it is also 120. Okay. But if I can't, I'm just going to fill in every one of the angles and just answer the question that they want. So here's another way to do that. So this is 120. We're going to do 120, uh, 180 minus 120 to get the one next to it. 180 minus 120 is 60. So this is 60. Okay. 
That would make C60, D120. E would also be 120 because it's in the same position as A. You see how E and A are in the same position? Okay. Okay, and we see here they're asking for angle H. It is in the 120 position. It is an obtuse angle. It is the big one, not the small one. Okay, you have big and small angles. They're asking for H. H is 120. Here's another example. Okay, it says if the measurement of angle A, if angle A is 135 degrees, what will angle B be? This one is really easy to see because the angle opens up so wide. Okay, that is an obtuse angle. That is 135. We see that that is also an obtuse angle. It is also 135. But if I can't see that visually, what I have to do is I have to do 135. Okay, then I can find the small one right here next to it, the one directly next to it by doing 180 minus 135. Okay, and in that situation, I would get 45. So we know that this one is 45, okay? This one is 135, this one is 45. This is 135, 45, 45, 135. So we know that B is 135. And I don't see that as an answer choice. Maybe it should have been C. There it is. Here's another example. It says the image below shows two parallel lines cut by a transversal. What is the measurement of angle one? Okay, so they gave us this 78 right here for one of the acute angles. We can find the one directly next to it by doing 180 minus 78, and you will get 102. So this one is 102. So we know that this one is 102, and this one is 78. All of the small ones will be 78. All of the big ones will be 102. Uh, 102 and 78. And they kind of alternate 78, 102, and then they flip. 78, 102, and then they flip. And so they're asking us for angle one. It is 102. Our answer is A. One last example with you here, just to make sure we solidify it and hit it home. It says the image shows two parallel lines cut by a trans two transversals, cut by a transversal. What is the measure of angle four? So here we have 115, and they want us to find angle four down here at the bottom. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna immediately find the acute, that's next to it. We're going to do 180 minus 115. Okay, and don't forget, we can always use our calculator to do the subtraction so that we don't make mistakes, which equals to 65. So we know that all of the acute, all of the small ones are 65. All of the big ones are 115. So angle four here is equal to one. 15. And that's the lesson for today.